Hey there, it's Darren and welcome to the Small Business Big Idea Show. This is where you'll find the kind of inspiring, poignant, and thought-provoking interviews that you won't find anywhere else. Why? Because I believe that everyday entrepreneurs and small business owners, people just like you and me, have incredible stories to tell. But unfortunately, they often go untold. My goal is to help bring them to light so that we can all learn from each other and get better together. Now today I have a special treat for you. I sat down with Josh Mitchell, who's the founder and owner in two businesses, Design on Tap and New Thread Films. Josh shares his incredible journey with us, including how hacking into a local internet service provider helped land him his first job, as well as how he had college interns working for him while he was still in high school. Enjoy. Thanks, Josh, for being here on the Small Business Big Idea Show. And yeah. so you run two companies, Design on Tap and New Thread Films. Correct. And um, so tell me, what's your favorite part? What's the most exciting part about being a founder and leading these companies? What do you, what, what do you get most excited about? I get most excited, I mean, just in general around like the, the culture creation side of it. So having a team, which we, we call them family, mm -hmm. and it's like really just building a place that I would want to work at because mm -hmm. I hated working for other people uh, just with the culture and like the way that they would do things. Um, so I wanted a place that I would want to work at and other people would also enjoy. Um, we're also kind of a little bit of like misfits in a way. So, uh, you know, all of us are uh, very ambitious and we're always learning, but a lot of us don't have like the traditional backgrounds. Uh, some of us maybe uh, quit college early or didn't go to college or some other, you know, different unique history on how mm -hmm. they got to this part of their journey. And what, what's one of your most challenging things about your, about your position? And what's one of the things are either one of the things you're working on yeah. or that's giving you difficulty or that's challenging for you? The challenge for me is like staying focused on one thing. So I have two companies. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, when I was younger, I would maybe have like three or four or just constantly Mm -hmm. um, building something, getting it up off the ground enough to like have a client or two, and then I get bored or want to, you know, go on to the shiny new toy, mm -hmm. and uh, that didn't result to much success. Mm -hmm. uh, so now, my my challenge is trying to stay focused, only keeping to the two, um, and even that is a struggle because you can only serve one master really well. Mm -hmm. So Design and Tap gets a lot of my love right now, and New Thread is still, you know, kind of a younger. I would say almost a younger child. It's, it's still trying to find its way. And what was the reason why you started these two businesses? What was the, the impetus or did, did something come up that caused you to, you know, you said, hey, I got an idea here that I want to actually make a real business around or was there, there was it something just spontaneously happened or did you have a plan or what was the reason for that? Yeah, so it's, it's typically around just kind of naturally finding like the next step in my journey. So. I was already doing like a web design company while I was in high school and started getting into user experience, started helping SaaS companies, mm -hmm. um, met Joel who uh, focuses on user experience. So partnering up with them, we, we brought um, my conversion design focus, his user experience focus, bring those uh, ideas together and then trying to build a service around what SaaS companies are, are struggling with. Mm -hmm. So finding that focus in that niche has been really important for us. What were you like as a kid? Were you tech savvy? Did you were, did you always want to start a business? Uh, what what did you? What kinds of things were you into? What, yeah. what did you do? Uh, I guess I've always been a little techie. Uh, there's a photo of me, and like I don't even know what you call those things where you're like a child and you can't stand yet, and you're walking <laughs> in one of those like a walker. Yeah, a walker thing. Yeah, yeah, there's like a photo of me, like interacting with what I think is called a super brain, which is like a really really old computer. And uh, I had probably no idea what I was doing. So you're gravitating to it. <laughs> yeah, uh, young, my young dad. Age. My dad was uh, into technology, so um, you know, inspired from that, I started studying like robotics at a very young age, reading about like resistor codes, things like that. Obviously, didn't go that way, but uh, kind of was always into. Were you that. into the uh, sci-fi movies, oh, yeah. Star Trek or Star oh, yeah. Wars, yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Yep. For sure. <laughs> and did you teach yourself to code or anything like that? Or did you did you yeah. get into that at all? Did you train or learn so in some way? When we got our first DOS computer, 
um, learned GW Basic, Turbo Basic, and then later on uh, Visual Basic. So I just kind of went down that uh, avenue. And then when I started working at Only Internet, I started learning more Visual Basic, um, going into a classic ASP, did some Cold Fusion, JavaScript, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, you went a lot farther than I did. I, <laughs> I, I taught myself a little bit of basic when I was, oh, yeah. when I was a kid. I, I don't, must have been like an early teenager. And it was the only thing coding I ever did. And uh, I remember I created this like little questionnaire. It was a silly little question so I could tease my friends and oh, my yeah. brother. It was all meant to basically just harass whoever I was trying yeah. to give the questionnaire to. So. Right. So I understand when you were in high school, I think it was, you got into a little bit of trouble with uh, an internet service provider. Not so much in trouble with the, the ISP, but I did hack them uh, and I found like a way to basically disconnect the people that are at the 56K speed because <laughs> Uh, I wanted to connect at that level, so I would just connect a few and then reconnect at the. Was that the speed. highest? Was that one of the higher? Yeah, levels? yeah, because there's you know they had like 14, 27. I don't even remember anymore. It's been a while, but you would connect to these different circuits at different speeds, and obviously on dial-up you wanted to be at the highest. So I would connect to them using hyper terminal, disconnect them, and then I'd reconnect. And then I started teaching um, some friends in school and like how to do that. And that actually uh, ended and did up. Did they find me. out? Did the company find out, or did you tell them, or what? What happened? Yeah, so I told them um, how how uh, how I was doing it, and then they were able to patch that hole. And then uh, that that, in a sense, is how I got my first job. I wow. I worked at Only Internet, and then doing ISP support connections, things like that, and then moved into development, web hosting manager. So you started several businesses while you were in high school, right? Yeah. It wasn't just one; it was a, a few different things. Um, or did you yeah, have... I guess there was two while I was in high school. And then after that, it kind of got into too many. Yeah, and when you, one of them was a web development company. Mm -hmm. and, and so how did you, you, you mentioned that earlier, so you got into that. And um, how did you get clients or what, what was it like to run that business early on yeah. in your... So I, would, I was fine at Only Internet. I mean, I was, I was doing really well. Um, but I asked for a raise. They wouldn't give it to me. And right around that same time, I met uh, these two kids, Mike and Justin, and they were putting this thing together called Third Web. And uh, it was like making these little templates for websites and whatnot. And I said, well, what if we actually designed and created them from scratch? And they're like, oh, well, we don't really know how to do that. I was like, hey, I, I do. So I joined them. So the three of us partnered up and created Third Web, and I left Only Internet. And like on our first day of business, we're like really excited. We're like going to drive and get like, I don't know, like a printer or stupid stuff, right? To start <laughs> right. your business. <laughs> right. And uh, like we're driving really fast, take this sharp turn, pop a tire. So our first business expense was <laughs> buying my new tire. <laughs> Fixing your tire. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And I understand, I don't know if it was this business or another business, but I understand that you even were able to convince some college interns to work for your business. Yeah. How, how were you able to pull that off? So I told my business partner, Mike, and it was, it was the high school business, um, Third Web, I told Mike, like, hey, we need more development help. I'm gonna call the universities and get some interns. And he's like, colleges are not gonna give you an intern. Like, you're right. in high school. <laughs> right. I'm like, why wouldn't they? So right. I just called, asked him, hey, uh, Third Web or in Bluffton, need some development interns that are, um, you know, no PHP. And uh, they sent people from Fort Wayne and uh, I think Kokomo uh, to Bluffton working for a high school, high school student. That's awesome. Oh, was yeah. it, and was it the, just the naivete of somebody your age at that point to, to think that, yeah, I just call them up and they'll do it? Or yeah, I mean, I was that what I mean, helped when, you? When Mike said, like, you couldn't get one, I, that didn't even ring, like, why? Why wouldn't they give, I mean, <laughs> right. we're a company, we're doing this. Right. Like, I but never really thought about it being weird until like much later in life. I was like, hey, that was kind of. Those, those, yeah. Cool that you're able to pull that off. Yeah. yeah. And so one of the other companies that you started was a digital signage company. Yeah. And you were still in high school when yeah. you did this? And you, so how did, how did you get a partner? Did you get funding? How did you, yeah, so how did you do that? I joined the local chamber and uh, you, know, you meet a lot of different people. And one of the people I met was a banker at First Bank of Bern. And uh, he was kind of quirky. And uh, I could tell like he just didn't really like, uh, he didn't thrive there, I think. Uh -huh. So I started asking him like, questions about like, how do I raise money? Like, how do we do this idea? And I started sharing the idea. And he, he loved it so much that he came on board as a partner, quit the bank, 
and then together we started Neodium. So wait a minute, you con you basically convinced this? I'm assuming he's a lot older than you at the time, oh, yeah. right? Because you're mean, probably still you're still a teenager. He had two kids, like, <laughs> and a wife. So. <laughs> so so you're a teenager. He's an older older guy. Yeah. You talk to him. You tell him about your idea. He gets excited about it and basically quits his job to work for this yep. with you with, in this business. Yeah. Wow, you're you're able to do a, pull off a lot of stuff when you're in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you had a pretty I, good start. Yeah. So as a kid, as a kid, you're doing a lot of business activity. You're starting up businesses. Was being an entrepreneur even something in your mind? I mean, did you even think of it in that term, in that way? Or were you just doing what came naturally to you? I mean, did you think you were starting a business or did you say, wow, I have this dream when I'm older to be an entrepreneur. And so I need to do all of this now to lead up to that point. Or was it just just automatic for you. I mean, how, did, how were you thinking about it? I think always as a kid, I've always had like a project. I was always like working on different things. Uh, so like entrepreneurship, I don't even think I knew that word at the time. Um, I, didn't, I don't even know that I really knew that I was selling or being a business owner or any of that. I you saw it like, more as a project. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a project where I, I have friends giving them stuff to do and we're having fun together. I mean, we lived in a small town a lot of people were getting into drugs, alcohol. So like this was like a kind mm -hmm. of an exception. It's an that. outlet, yeah. it's a way out, it's a, something for you to do that's, yeah. so you don't get tied up into the other other things. Exactly. I mean, how do you think about that term now? Now that you're a lot older and you're looking back and you're all your career and you know, how do you think about the word entrepreneur? Do you self-identify with that or do you feel like I'm still just a guy working on projects? I'm a, I'm I'm a business owner maybe. Yeah. But or do you embrace that term? I think I connect with the term, um, mm -hmm. especially with design on tap. Like we're we're getting to a point where like we're you're working with entrepreneurs basically too, right? Yeah. In a lot of I mean, in in that case, with yeah. that, with that business particularly, but, and maybe even with New Thread Films too. I mean, some may be more established companies and bigger companies or family businesses, but some may be newer businesses as well that have video needs. Yep. So you've had a long career now of starting different businesses. What was one of the most difficult periods for you or points for you during that journey? I'd imagine that there's a lot of ups and downs in the life of an entrepreneur yeah. and everybody goes through them. What was a low point for you that you had to work through? It was a little bit of a domino effect. Um, business partner and I had a falling out. I tried to reboot the company under a different name. The company had some success, but then largest client was having financial problems. We had another big client that got bought out by a VC firm out in Seattle. Uh, so we were just losing you know, that momentum that we, we were building up. And then uh, girlfriend plus five years, supposed to get married, broke up. I mean, it was just like a whole bunch of these things. Uh, I was getting into debt. I was living actually in the pyramids where we had our office. Uh, and this had, is a different business than you have now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I changed the lock on the closet so that way the cleaning crew would never discover me. Uh, so like you'd go in there and you're sleeping and then one, you know, a couple nights. So you slept, you stayed there. Yeah. So there was a couple nights I was sleeping there and the light turned on. I'm like, you know, it's kind of a jarring, right? And then you just have to be quiet, let the cleaning crew do their thing. Oh my gosh. And like hope that you don't get discovered. <laughs> oh uh, and they didn't know you were in there. You no, were able to, wow. No. Um, it was very scary. And then like there was one night a fire alarm went off and it was not going off. like. So I actually, like, it was cold too. I went down, went to my car, slept in my car the rest of the night just so that I could get out of the noise. And yeah, it was, it was not a good time. And I remember walking around the office trying to find enough change to get some food. I was getting sued by the pyramids because I couldn't pay. And this is, your la this is your landlord? Yeah. So couldn't pay the rent for where I was working or living, right? Um, the, the team that I had at the time didn't know I was living there either. So like my commute, I had to go down the elevator ride, take a shower in the fitness center, take the elevator back, and it looked like I was coming into the office for the first time. Oh my gosh. Uh, so yeah, it was, wow. it was kind of a, a very rough time. And uh, that, yeah, that was kind of- how'd you, how'd you pull through? Did it take a long time to pull through that? Was it a matter of getting your business back on track, your finances back on track? Yeah, how did you it, work through that? It, it took a while to, to repair that, um, mostly because it's just emotional, like going down through like a depression mm -hmm. time period of um, not having very much value or worth. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, kind of worked my way out of that. And then I needed to work myself out of the financial problems then. 
So I promised my dad that I'd work somewhere for two years, uh, get my financial picture. So you back took a there. job with somebody yeah. else at this point. So I worked at Miller Brooks for two years, which is an ad agency up in Zionsville, and that helped me kind of get back on my feet. And then I left to go create what I'm doing now. What was what were some of the lessons like during that difficult period for you? What were the important life lessons that you learned? I think one of the lessons I learned is just definitely not. I mean, it's everybody probably hears this and read it, but it's hard to not do sometimes. And that's putting too many eggs in one basket. So having two huge clients that represented basically all the income uh, is a very dangerous place to be. So diversify your, your client base as much as possible. Definitely. I think too, uh, when I rebooted the company with a new partner, um, the partner was too much like me. So we amplified our weaknesses and our strengths. It was fun, had a great time, we're, we're great friends still, but it was not the right move from a business partner standpoint. That's a good point too, because a lot of people, whether they're looking for employees or partners, you know, we a lot of times we are attracted to people like us, mm -hmm. and you know, it's like kind of being around yourself, I guess. Yeah. And you, like you said, you amplify your strengths and weaknesses, and then, but in a business context where you want, you know, to have different strengths and weaknesses so you can be more balanced as a whole, as a group, as a team, mm -hmm. that doesn't work always so well. And then there's something maybe that's not getting done. Mm -hmm. And so you, it sounds like you experienced that too. Yeah. Now, as a business owner, as a business leader, do you also see yourself as a salesperson and a marketer as well as a leader in your business? Or how do you feel about that dynamic? Good question. So I, I never really thought about sales. And uh, looking back on that, it's, it's kind of crazy to me. Um, I wish I would have invested more time into training and sales sooner. Uh, it wasn't really until about a year and a half ago that I started going down that path. So now that you're older and you've been through a lot, you've experienced a lot with your businesses, if you could go back in time and visit the young Josh, whether it's the high school version or younger version of yourself, knowing all that you know now, what advice would you give him? Focus on sales much, much sooner. Um, be careful of the multiple eggs in one basket problem. Um, try to be more focused and have more niche in like the business that you're running. Go deeper into doing. one of your ideas yeah. instead of trying to go wide. Yep. So you're basically self-taught as a business owner. You know, you did it yourself. You learned from experience. You've had businesses from a young age. You didn't go to college or go the more traditional route. How do you feel about formal education? Do you feel that you succeeded even though you didn't go to school, that, you're, it, that, that it would have given you maybe a leg up? Or do you feel that it maybe would have held you back or that you wouldn't have been able to do some of the things that you were able to do by just going straight out and doing it? Uh, for me, school was not designed in a way that worked. Um, it just was not fulfilling, wasn't engaging. So I really, really suffered you know, through school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so for me, it was not the right move. Uh, but I think a lot of people don't have the drive or the, uh, you know, are willing to wake up early in the morning and just start figuring out, okay, this is what I'm gonna start learning. This is what I'm gonna start doing, right? I think some people need that guidance. Some people need to be told, all right, this is what you're learning structure. next. Structure, so, yeah. just having the structure. Yeah. So I think if, if you need that structure, school will give that to you and that's great. Uh, if you're like me and like you hate structure, then school's not, current school system is not great for that. Many years from now, looking back on everything that you've done, you got a long way to go yet, you're still a young guy. What do you want your legacy to be? I just want to be known to help my friends and family. Uh, through your business, through your, just in life too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my mom has struggled. She has worked at McDonald's a lot of her life. So helping her, um, you know, uh, my dad's a little bit more of a middle class. So I've kind of had both sides. I got to see a little bit like how my dad works with money and how my mom, you know, struggled with it. So like it was kind of a, it was interesting seeing both dynamics there and like mm -hmm. building that set. Um, so I mean, I want to create strong family cultures, um, create couple businesses around that and just enjoy life doing that and, and helping you know one thing I heard uh, 
forget the name of the entrepreneur, but he said something around, uh, I had to make enough money so my mom wouldn't have to work another day of her life. And like that was his like why or his goal or whatever. And I thought that was pretty powerful. That's that's a really strong one. That resonated with you, yeah. yeah. What last thought or insight or idea would you like to share with other entrepreneurs or business owners that might be listening to this right now? Don't have a closed mind. Don't tell yourself the wrong stories. Uh, you know, growing up in a small town, uh, I myself had you know the wrong stories that I was telling myself. Friends are telling themselves the wrong stories. People are telling each other the wrong stories. So like that resonated with me and, and that's totally how it was in, in the small town that I grew in, grew up in. Uh, someone would try to have like an idea and they'd be like, oh, it won't work or you're not smart enough or whatever, right? And you start believing those stories and you don't really realize that you're believing them, but you are, you're repeating them in your head and, and they become the, your truth. And uh, I say challenge that and really find out like, are those really real stories or are they things that you've learned or been told as you grow, as you've been growing up. So I'd say fight those, challenge them, and then go out there and, and do something. Great. Do something great. Thanks so much, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate no it.